Yeah, uh, one of these players has come quietly through the group stages into this event, and the other one's Fujitora. <laughs> has done well exactly done. the opposite. <laughs> Uh, you got to appreciate that to some extent. So, Fujitora going to start the ball trying to get, of course, the Barnes opener. Does not find it, unfortunately, for him. So, he's going to try to still get the Asharaj. So, this looks like the control lineup, maybe for Scream, with the Mage, of course, attempting to get the Luker strategy. I'm going to call it that because he's the player that I saw play it first and the most efficiently. The Spell Hunter, not a deck that's usually good at completely destroying... The mage player, there's enough AoE to beat all the threats. The big issue, though, is that without Jaina or a very good Artificer turn, the mage just sort of runs out of HP over time. It does. It sort of cools down, and double Ice Block will help a lot with that in hand. Um, also got the Polymorph in case of the Yashiraj, but obviously that's not a deal. But we won't see that Polymorph played ever until Yashiraj is played. They're actually both playing Control Mage, but they're still both playing aggressive Warlock decks of some sort, and they're both playing Combo Priests, so... Pretty much a mirror when you say, if you say the Murlocs are a mirror, give us that one. Sure. I'd yeah. rather have the Murlocs because the people are playing Hunter, but apart from that, it's pretty close. Probably just give the edge to Scream. Uh, apparently, both of these players, I didn't see all of their matches, but apparently they, they both struggled in their quarterfinals with a bit of nerves, I heard. Yeah, I was told that the, the decks weren't exactly played optimally, probably because at this point the stakes are so high that you... You just can't really zone in on the focus that you've been expressing throughout the entirety of the tournament. Some shaky plays, maybe the fact that they've had to resort, of course, to another deck being added to their lineup instead of a best of five, it's a best of seven. The exhaustion hasn't kicked in yet, I believe, unless these guys have been playtesting all night, which, you know, some of them might have. Especially so, their fifth deck. Right, exactly. So yeah. that, that last deck they include here, which seems to be control mage for a lot of players, as it was sort of left to the side or played as a secret mage instead. Yeah, I think people flipped their lineups and most of them had the same idea. This is the problem when you're playing with other top players is you all have the same idea and you have to work out what's the real good idea and what's me just being me. Yeah, Fujitora though sticking to his guns. He's playing Q-Block in his lineup. He's got the double faceless version. He's got the combo priest as well. So no big difference here. This matchup is where things start escalating. The Rexar for Fujitora, the most important card. The Death Knights come in as absolute backbreakers for both players. I think right now Fujitora is looking amazing just because specifically of the Zombies. He can make untargetable bear shark hybrids that just can't be <laughs> killed. I mean, this is a very dangerous hero power for the mage player and Scream knows it. When I was growing up, I never thought I'd sit next to a man who said the phrase untargetable bear shark hybrids, but that is exactly where we're at and on top of all that, he still has Rock Dalar if things go wrong for much later in the game. He obviously can't play it until Barnes is down. But the mage, the one weakness of this mage deck is it's such an exhausting, exhaustion-based deck. It does have a very little way back into games. It, it can't threaten you. It just has to sit and soak it up. And Rexar says, well, what are you soaking up? I'm not, it's not costing me any resources. Yeah, that's the strength of the Deathstalker Rexar, a card that I think is a personal favorite of a lot of players, including me. I mean, it's one of my favorite cards in Hearthstone, probably by, by a long shot. The ability to customize your deck is, honestly, I think, awesome. It's kind of interesting to look at a card game where usually when you build a deck, well, you know, the, the developers create cards for you. You put them in your deck. It's an archetype that's somewhat meant to be. But then they create these cards that let you create cards. Kazakus was the first glaring example of that. Yes. And a lot of people loved it. Beast Hunter with the Deathstalker takes it another step further. You get so much more flexibility. Sometimes you get very vanilla creatures, so they're not always the most exciting. But you can get some very intense, you know, dispatch, Kodos, swinging for eight. Like, some things are just completely ridiculous. Yeah, and the ordering on them is good because it's the first part that's usually the complicated minion, and the second part is, like, the... It has one word on it or no words, like, charge. Like, it has stealth penguin. and a stat line, or it's just big and beefy, yeah. or, it, you know, so the... That manipulates the, the real minion, which is the first one. The real minion. The weasel tunnelers. Yeah, this and this has actually said something. It says that Fuji Tour is not scared of fatigue. He would rather put a dead card into Scream's deck than worry about the card it saves him in fatigue. So Fuji's just happy that this never goes to fatigue. 
Well, I mean, he loses the Fatigue War because, of course, while well, tracking is played in the deck, which means that he yep. loses more cards generally than his opponent. Granted, sometimes the Mage just draws additional cards with Arcanologist and the Raven Familiar, but the Hunter is the one who's forced to end the game as early as possible. Without Deathstalker, it's almost impossible. When the card is in your bottom five, uh, the Mage just gets the ball rolling way too fast for you. And this is the first time I think we've seen Fujitora not looking quite so chirpy. I think he's a little bit more zoned in, trying to focus on what he's got to do instead of... Because he is an actual meme. In Barcelona, right. he, he was saying to us, I'm going to play this, I can't remember which warrior it was, but whatever it was at the time was the wrong choice. And everybody said to him, no, don't, you will lose. And he says, well, I want to meme a bit. And so he did, and he lost. Like in the, in the quarterfinals, he'd already qualified for this, but they just threw away the chance at $15,000. Just because he wanted to have a bit of a meme. I mean, that sounds very Fujitora-like. And he actually thanked x -Blaine in this tournament for using naughty words to talk him out of playing Mill Warrior in this event. Dead Man's Hand? He called it Mill Warrior, but let's sure, go with Dead Man's that, Hand, that, yeah. That seems to be Dead Man's Hand, I believe. So Meteor here will snipe off its first of many potential high health targets. Again, double Polymorph, double Meteor in the hand for Scream. So we're talking about how dangerous it is for him to run into Deathstalker Rexar. At the very least, unless Bear Shark shenanigans come up, he still has a very good chance. The problem with Alex Straza here in the deck, of course, is very often, you know, you do get the health restoration or the health removal on your opponent. But you don't run burn. Like, the deck does not have fireballs. It doesn't have pyroblasts. So she can't really be used as efficiently as you'd like as an offensive tool. So you end up using her defensively very often, which just gives the hunter more time anyway. I'm not sure I'm happy about the use of the artificer there. Um, obviously, you've got to use it at some point to get the armor. But I think I'd like to see him take a chance and try and get it to stick around for two turns. I think there's some merit to trying to keep the Artificer alive. The issue is that if you let the opponent redevelop onto the board with the big zombies mm -hmm. that can charge, you know, Stone Tusk Boar, Rhino, those are sort of the common, I slap it onto something. For sure, I just think maybe he could have played it the next turn or a bit later and maybe use it in a better situation. Maybe not, but if you get two uses out of that, it's such a big bonus. I think it's worth the gamble. Weasel Tunneler comes back as the zombified version. And I think it's worth noting that Fujitora chose the Weasel Tunneler for many reasons, but it's going to play against him here as it's going to soak up the Freezing Trap potentially. I wouldn't be surprised if we just saw Yasharge being played. Zombiest is of course usually more consistent because it gives you potential future follow-up, like power, where you're able to get the Zombiest um, to create more beasts that have charge. The advantage of playing the Rhino here is that if you kill the Tunneler, then Yasharish can bring it out of your deck. And that gives you a pretty sizable amount of tempo. Yeah, that's nicely thought of, actually. Um, that's exactly what he was thinking yeah. of when he made the Tunneler. It's like, oh, that goes back into my deck? No problem. Yasharish can bring it out. And that'll give me a bit more power. Yeah, it's those swing turns that help you beat um, these sort of decks. Although he should be in a good spot anyway. There's no reason not to play it really well. And that's a very good spot. From him. Now and that's not a card you expect out of every major deck. Which one? That's oh, Cindra the Cindragosa. Yeah, so this is the super greedy version. This is actually a very interesting call and could matter later in the mirror. And also, if he gets there against Lucas against the final, the, the Cindragosa mage deck came about when everybody was playing the, the Nazoth mage. Just, sure. Sorry, just not the Nazoth mage, just the normal yeah. grindy mage. And... It, it came about to be that. So Scream has actually predicted that everyone's going to go one level up. And he's gone above them all uh, with this deck. I like it. I like it a lot. Well, that's the reason why we saw Frozen play something similar. So it, look like, it looks like Barnes is going to get another Tunneler onto the board here. <laughs> what is life? Ugh. What am I playing here? So Barnes will find value. Yasharaj will find value. Unbelievably. <laughs> Both players actually seeing the funny side that they're playing for a huge amount of money and they're just facing weasel tunnelers. I'm sure that... Uh, you know what will be Twitch funny, rejoices. though? It's that moment where weasel tunneler becomes a competitive card because there's an effect that requires you have only even cards in your deck as you play it. Oh, and you give someone... That's interesting, because I joked that they should nerf Warlock by giving weasel tunneler demon. Fair enough. <laughs> um, and that's kind of the, that's kind of oh, the same thing. This is amazing. Um, it is kind of the same thing. Yeah, stick it in your even deck and ruin them. That's actually a thing. 
Okay, Fujitor is not messing around though. He is just getting this damage done while he can. Kill Command in hand. Rock Dalar in hand is more damage as well, of course. Yeah, I mean, he knows that the Freezing Trap will soak up the Cindragosa, which, while it's giving your opponent more zero ones that can generate legendaries, is still giving you all the time in the world to close out this game yeah. if your minions stay alive. And even if they don't, I mean, if they stay alive, you win. If they don't stay alive, you make some more. That's this Builder Beast, as you said at the time, has completely taken over this game. And Scream has been kind of locked out ever since. You can see all the removal he has, but the way that mana caps out at 10 means you just can't use it all. Yeah, the beast staying alive also will give the kill command a little bit more viability here as it will deal a tiny bit more damage, which matters at this point, as every bit of damage ends up making a difference. Scream will try to dig for something useful. It could be... Well, that that Morabi is, is not really... Nah, I mean, it's a card. He can get some more minions in his hand. Yeah. He's found millions of ways to generate minions this game, like getting weasels and copy frozen minions, but... Not, not one of them wins. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really help much, except you die with a handful of complete rubbish. This is one of the most unusual games I've seen for some time. Just almost every card in their hand is just going to end up not be having started their decks. That's what Deathstalker does, though, right? Like, in most of the circumstances, Hunter just takes over with random combinations <laughs> of things that make no sense. And the mage is able to generate its own set of weird minions as well, thanks to Cindergosa. So it's an interesting... Tweak on the usual way the deck pans out. I don't even know if a 5-3 stealth for 4 that generates a 1-1 one, one tabby cat is even that fantastic. But it's certainly amusing and the stealth option is going to make sure that he sets up damage. And that is one of the ways you play this against control. As Fuji actually Grievous bites the naught one there to make Scream overdraw. And he's overdrawn Flame Strike because of that play. But the Ink Master somehow triggers... It's enabled. How? Uh, it just it just is. That should not be possible at this point in the game. But it is. <laughs> and what is even going? First of all, you've got to get it. Secondly, Fuji Two has got to try and overdraw you. And thirdly, it's got to be enabled. And, and that's insanity. I don't understand this game anymore. I'm with you. <laughs> I mean, it looks like it's over anyway. Because Fuji has kill command. Yeah, but. but there's the eyes block still waiting to go through. So if Scream can somehow find a way to stabilize with that Alex Straza after clearing up the board, there's a chance that the game is not quite completely over. But again, more and more power coming down for Fujitora. Yeah, I assume he would have taken the grandmother with the first part. It's nice and cheap, generates more minions when they're killed, which is what you want against AoE, yeah. Uh, uh, not a big surprise there. He will be able to pop the ice block here, which is what matters the most, as he's got a second bow and Rock Delar also to close out the game afterwards. So it was a big surprise for Riding Hood, though. She had no idea. Anyway, back in the real world, the second ice block's going to come down and buy some more time, but 28 damage required, and Explosive Trap just wins the game until Jaina turns up, and there she is. Well, I think at this point, if you're a Scream, you probably have to just go for the Ice Block Meteor, set up the Alex Straza for the following turn, and then go for Jaina. Yeah, it's really awkward. If it had just been slightly different one turn earlier, maybe, then the whole game would have been turned on its head. Yeah, and again, the Death Knights have such a big impact in the matchup. You know, Death Deathstalker, Rexstar, we've talked about, and we've seen, never mind talking about, we have seen just how important the value generation has been in this game yep. for... Uh, for Fujitora. Imagine a world where he didn't get those rhinos, where he didn't force the meteors, where he didn't force the polymorphs, where he didn't get, you know, seven damage battle cry to the enemy phase. Yeah, he'd have rocked Delard into a whole series of things that one or two would have been useful and many wouldn't have been. He'd been looking for like, animal companions and stuff to try and keep it rolling. So, going back to the previous turn, you know, we saw Scream not, uh, you know, not being able to clean up the board with the, these minions. Even if there hadn't been another weapon here for Fujitora, Odds are he would have been able to to still pop you because of the extra 3-2. So this is one of those cases where the AoE just never really lined up with a full clear. You know, Dragon's Fury being picked up earlier with low damage, um, being played for force to ping instead of developing onto the board. There's a few turning points here, but I'd still like to go back to the main mention you made of maybe not extracting maximum artificer value. It's, it's a thing that he could have maybe played around with a little bit more. I mean, he would never have got less value than he got unless he died obviously if you die sure. you get zero value and he was getting a little low 
but it's unlikely he would have got less value. And there was just that outside chance he could go Artificer, Blizzard. Maybe it lives. Yeah, it's possible. It's not likely to live, but maybe it does. And then you flame strike and you gain 13 armor instead of 5, and that could be a difference maker. Now the ice blocks are out of the way. Alex Strada comes out in a desperation move. Nine damage on the board, 14 from what we can see. Leoc or Huffer would close this out with Animal Companion. I think with Rock Delar, he just gets the extra one damage, if I'm not mistaken. That looks right. Mathematics add up, and this is going to be exact lethal for Fujitora. No gimmick, just a bunch of zombies. Bunch of zombies. They are absolutely billions of those things, and he has got it done in there. Takes the 1-0 lead, and... No BMs today, or at least no BMs from now onwards.